Hey everybody, here's an Okia power supply that I pulled out of a recent parts machine I bought. It was that last machine that had pretty much brand new components in it for like $20. And this power supply here is a um, included with case special. Let's go ahead and have a look at how this thing is built. But first let's go ahead and look at the specs. Anyways, pause if you spec label. Okay, notice one thing how this thing is very special. It was manufactured probably in 2007, but it's got 2001 compliance specs with a 50 amp 5 volt rail. I mean, seriously, the old Pentium 3 and Athlon days are over. Everything runs on the 12 volt rail nowadays. They give you 18 amps on that. At least that's, that's what they say anyway. 28 amps on the 3.3. See, um, minus 12 volt rail is 1 amp minus 5 volt rail that's also something that was exempt from the ATX specification many years ago 0 0.8 amps you know what the, the 5 volt minus 5 volt rail is for um, ISA buses and that's um, why they don't use that nowadays because computers don't use the ISA bus anymore it's all PCI and PCI Express anyways I'm um, 5 volt standby rail 2.5 amps and um, it says Plus 5 volt and plus 3.3 volt combined load 230 watts. That's probably actually the combined load of the whole entire thing. No, actually that's probably 200 watts. Anyways, um, plus 5 volt, plus 12 volt, and plus 3.3 volt combined load 422 watts. Total output is 450 watt max. So really, um, according to their spec label, when you load the 5, 12, and 3.3, it's really a 422 watt power supply. But we know it's not even that. And they give you this um, UL number here, which when you go to search on the UL site, it leads you to nowhere. It's not a valid search result. That's pretty common. So anyways, let's go ahead and break the seal and have a look inside the thing. Here's our seal. Made in China. Chinese Deluxe. They can't even make a, put a capital C there for China. Now, let's go ahead and take these screws off and pop the cover. Now, before I pop, um, pop the cover off, let's go ahead and look at the connectors. I meant to do that earlier, but here's our one SATA connector. Notice that very thin gauge wire. I bet your hard drive would just love that. Let's see. Here's two Molex connections with a floppy connection. Real thin wire. Heck, I think my Diablo Tech Power Supply has better wire than this. Here's a 20 plus 4 pan connector. Here's our ATX Trollwalk connection. Really thin wire. It's funny, I've actually seen some half decent Power Supplies have thin wire on this plug, and I don't understand why. It don't make sense when the CPU requires a good bit of power. And here's our two other Molex connections. So we have four Molex connections. This four pin CPU power connection. Our 20 plus four. And Corey, yeah, one floppy. And a SATA. For our one SATA hard drive. So I guess for the rest of the SATA components, you gotta use adapters. Let's kind of pop off the cover and have a look inside. Have a look at this. So they actually did bother to put some sort of um, some capacitors here on the Y capacitor hookups, even though these aren't the right ones to use. The ones that are commonly used on this kind of circuit are blue. They actually did bother to um, this this PC actually does have spots for long filters. We have the four diode treatment here. Some nice 330 microfarad capacitors. Very, very underrated for this kind of power supply. It should have at least 470s in here. Here's a real nice and thin heat sinks. Two transistor 5 volt standby. Goodness, I see three. Yeah, I see three transistors here. So we have two main switchers and a 5 volt standby. I mean, yeah, 5 volt standby switcher. Very small NTC thermistor for the inrush current limiting circuit. Normally, good quality power supplies have 
NTCs that are much, much bigger than that. And if you're wondering what NTC stands for, that's negative temperature coefficient. So that means when the power supply is cold and it's first plugged in, it allows, it's more or less a resistor that limits the amount of current it goes through, but once it warms up, it allows current to flow through more easily. Anyways, have a look at these small little transformers. This is a nice little 150 watt, maybe 200 watt power supply. Well, actually, no, not really when you factor in the, the fact that there's no, there's barely any EMI filtering. It only gets better. Let's have a look at this. Let me get my flashlight so I can show you. Instead of using a switching diode pack, they just stuck two diodes in there and soldered the whole mess together and, and clamped it onto the heatsink. Isn't that just wonderful? And that's probably for the plus 12 output. And usually, this means you could probably get maybe 6 amps out of the 12-volt rail. And that's just pretty, that's just a pretty common number. Maybe 6 to 8 amps out of the 12-volt rail. And if I wanted to, I could actually install the right component there, but I know something else doesn't look right either. Let's go ahead and zoom in and have a look. Yeah, I, I get, get rid of some right light so you can see a little better. Well, hang on. Oh, there we go. Notice that blob of something sticking out from under there? That, that's pretty bad. That's real sorry if you ask me yeah I mean that's that's pretty, that's just terrible let's go ahead and zoom back out and on the right we have our humongous um, 5 volt rectifier because of course this is a 2001 compliant power supply I mean most I mean most of the output on computers nowadays is 5 volts anyway not really but apparently they they thought so this apparently looks to be um, this estimating off the model number. It's a I see SB 3040ST. So it's either rated for 30 amps or 40 amps. Not exactly sure. Probably 30, just as a guesstimate. And on our left, we have a um, 7593Z. Sometimes I can guess how many amps these things pull. I mean these amps this thing are rated for but some in this case I can't really tell I'd have to look these up but yeah that's that's ridiculous let's go and have a look over here let's see our um, 5 volt standby switcher it looks to be a fair child judging by the logo 2N60C and we have for the main switchers, we have two D13007s. And for our capacitors, we have CandyCon. Isn't that just wonderful? You know, yeah, our, um, our fan appears around off the 12 volt rail, so it gets full 12 volts at all times. I mean, it's, this thing's just a piece of garbage. I wouldn't even see the point of even bothering to stick in the proper components on the EMI filter. Sometimes I'll do this with somewhat cheap power supplies and don't usually last as long as you don't overload them but I mean this is just absolutely terrible I wouldn't want to run this in my computer or any even even if it's an old Pentium 4 I wouldn't want to use this the only thing it's ever got used for at least by me anyway was to test the motherboard to see that it worked but the the surprising thing though about the PCB on this board is um, if I was to switch some components out I could possibly make this into a better unit I mean it does have this spot available for let's see for both coils for the um, both long filters that you put two X I mean yeah X capacitors in here change out those Y capacitor for some better quality components and I can take those diodes out and actually install a bridge rectifier if you can notice where it says BD1 is upside down, but anyways, um, yeah. In order to make this even half decent, it would require a lot of work, uh, switching out components. 
Some people like to do it. Sometimes I do, but it depends. So anyways, that's what the inside of a, um, including case one of power supply, the Okia model, o Okia dash 450 ATX looks like. Isn't it just wonderful? To be honest with you, when it comes to Okia power supplies, there are a couple of models that seem half decent, but they would still need some work. There's only one model I know from Okia that is actually ready to go out of the box. It has all the EMI filtering and stuff on it. You can just toss it in your case and go. But, um, if you ever find one of these on the computer, get rid of it. So anyways, um, and no questions or comments, feel free to ask.